Today we'll be looking at a congenital heart disease called coarctation of the aorta. This is a narrowing in the aortic lumen which therefore causes an obstruction to outflow from the heart. Aorta has three layers, the intima, media and adventitia. In this disease there is an abnormal media which leads to proliferation of the inside layer resulting in constriction which we call coarctation. Coarctation of the aorta accounts for 5% of congenital heart disease and 10 to 15% of girls with it have Turner syndrome. The condition is often accompanied by a bicuspid aortic valve. It's easier to understand with a picture. Here we have the aorta delivering blood to the body. This is our pulmonary trunk, our aortic arch and branches of the aorta. Here is our patent ductus arteriosus and imagine our left ventricle pumping oxygenated blood to the body while the right ventricle pumps our deoxygenated blood to the lungs to be oxygenated. There are two types of coarctation. The first is preductal, which occurs proximal to the ductus. In this situation, the ductus persists after birth, and so we have some deoxygenated blood getting through to the systemic circulation and mixing with a small amount of oxygenated blood which gets through the narrowing. So the body below this point gets mixed blood, causing cyanosis particularly in the lower body. This defect requires early intervention for survival. The second and more common type of coarctation is postductal, occurring in the aorta distal to the ductus arteriosus. In this type, the ductus closes after birth to form the ligamentum arteriosum. So the blood coming through the aortic narrowing to reach the system is fully oxygenated, but the flow is reduced. These usually present later in life, there is reduced flow to the body. The presentation depends on the size of the narrowing. Preductal presents in infants within days of birth as cyanosis of the lower limbs. If the ductus has already closed, there will be heart failure and shock. The situation is life-threatening. Postductal coarctation can be asymptomatic and is found in kids and adults. There is a reduced lower body perfusion yet no cyanosis. The upper body experiences increased blood flow resulting in hypertension, while the lower body has reduced flow, hypotension, and weak pulses. There may also be symptoms of claudication and cool peripheries due to this reduced flow. Collateral circulation also develops to bypass the obstructed arch and thus blood takes longer to reach the extremities, so a radiofemoral delay is common. For further examination and investigation, let's compare infants with adults. Heart sounds in the infant may include systolic murmur at the upper left sternal edge, as well as palpable thrills. In the adult, we may hear a continuous murmur on the back due to flow through collateral vessels. The chest X-ray in infants will show cardiomegaly as a result of heart failure and shock whereas in adults there is a characteristic sign of inferior rib notching. This is caused by the increased blood flow through internal thoracic and intercostal vessels, which form the collateral supply when the coarctation is long-standing. The ECG in preductal will be normal or showing right ventricular hypertrophy, as the right ventricle has become the main systemic pump via the ductus arteriosus. In contrast, with long-standing postductal coarctation, left ventricular hypertrophy is seen, as the left ventricle is the main systemic pump working against an outflow obstruction. Echocardiogram and cardiac catheterization are diagnostic for these conditions. To fix the coarctation, there are three main options. First, we have surgery, which may include resection with end-to-end -end anastomosis, this is used for when the coarctation segment is short. A patch aortoplasty is an option, but it carries a risk of aneurysm. A bypass graft can be used for longer segments. And subclavian flap is useful in those younger than one year. Secondly, we have balloon angioplasty, but this carries an increased risk of recoarctation. It is recommended for unstable infants. Thirdly, 
stenting is an option which is mainly used in adults. It is important to note that all treatment carries a risk of recoarctation. While in preductal type, it is crucial to maintain the patent ductus arteriosus to prevent heart failure and shock. This is achieved with a prostaglandin infusion. We should manage heart failure, if present, with inotropic agents which increase cardiac contractility. Dopamine or dobutamine are the options. In addition, we need supportive care. The intervention for this type depends on whether the infant is unstable in which case balloon angioplasty should be performed. Or if they are stable, surgery is the preferred intervention. In postductal coarctation, we should intervene if the peak-to-peak -peak coarctation gradient, that is, the pressure difference across the coarctation, is greater than 20 millimeters of mercury, or where it is less than 20 millimeters of mercury, with evidence of a collateral circulation on chest X-ray. In kids, intervention via surgery or angioplasty is recommended, while for adults we can perform surgery or stenting. Keep in mind that there is a risk of persistent hypertension even after intervention for coarctation.